For years, a family gets notes that someone is watching them. Is this a prank, a sinister plot, or something paranormal? This has become one of the biggest mysteries of today. So I ask you this, who is watching you? You? Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. All right, guys, welcome back to Cone 187. Um, I am your true crime best friend. I am Sarah, and this is Drew. Hello. And today we got a big one. Um, so I am beyond excited to do this episode. Um, I heard this case a long time ago. Um, it was first on a pod, a little podcast, just a little one called Morbid, which uh, <laughs> is not little. It's one of her favorites. It's my favorite podcast ever. Um, and you have to go listen to their episode on it. It's really, really good. And <clears throat> I actually got into Morbid from this case. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, and... Now, this is going to be a Netflix special. Okay. I think a series. Um, they put out a trailer. The trailer's pretty cool. Um, and it's getting a lot of big buzz. And so I'm just beyond excited to tell the story and also to watch the damn Netflix show because <laughs> um, they are just killing it time after time and if they do as good a job on this as they do the rest i'm excited agreed they've been they've been doing really good in the true crime space they have um and that case this case is called the watcher dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. um so do you know anything about this other than what i've said no you gave the teaser here a little bit ago and the teaser Sounds like there's possibly some paranormal thing in, so, uh, things in this, and that means two out of the three that you brought me on for are paranormal so far. <laughs> so, well, what's no interesting is a lot of people don't think this is a paranormal case. Mm. People think this is just a straight up true crime, um, kind of threatening case. And as we go, we'll see kind of what you decide and land on. Okay. She will have to convince me. I, as we talked about on the other one, I'm not, not a huge believer, but I'm not not a believer. Uh, so she will have to convince me if that's the side that she's on. But we'll see. Yeah. So let's talk about this house first. So the address is six fifty seven Boulevard, Westfield, New Jersey. Boulevard is the street name. Weird. Um, it's also kind of a creepy address, if you ask me. Why do you say that? I don't know. It just seems like, or 657 Boulevard. Like, mm. it's the beginning of a movie. It right. Like. I yeah, know. I could see that. Like a old black and white horror movie, maybe, or something. Yeah. Um, it is a $1.3 million home. Is it still? <laughs> That's my first thought. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's gone back and forth. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is big. It is beautiful. It has six bedrooms, um, perfect for a young, growing family. The nearby schools are rated good and all within a mile. Um, it is well lit with a beautiful front entry staircase. Um, it even has a side sunroom that is brick lined and beautifully soaked in natural sunlight. Um, but I like you're a real estate agent. <laughs> you try to sell me on this. Pretty much. I'm trying to sell you this big, gorgeous house. Um, but this house, this gorgeous house is off the market right now. And that is probably for the best. Um, cause but are there pictures on Zillow? Yes. There are. Yes. Okay. Well, that's not like 
the whole house, but I have seen the Parts pictures. Parts of it. Yes. So there you go. Um, to anyone who's listening to this, go look up that address on Zillow and see if you can find anything. Yeah. Um, and don't stalk them, please. <laughs> yeah. But if there is a family living there, don't don't bother that poor family. <laughs> They're already going through enough. <laughs> um, but like I said, it is off the market, which is probably for the best because someone is watching the house. Just watching. That's, yeah, don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> as creepy as that is. Okay, so 657 Boulevard was built in 1905. Um, there have been families in and out of the home since. Uh, but things started to get weird in 2014. This is when Derek and Maria Broadus bought the house for their family. They hadn't fully moved in yet. Um, Derek was overseeing some light repairs to this house. Um, He checked the mail one day and there was a strange letter. So it was something funny as I was going through this research was I had wrote down, Derek was doing, you know, light changes and construction to the house. And then I went on with the research. And then later on, I was like, wait a second. This guy built this house, well, b- bought this house for $1.3 million. He is not doing construction. Yeah. He is overseeing the yeah, construction. Yeah, paying somebody to do it, probably. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, maybe some people enjoy it, I guess. but Maybe, but I really think he was just kind of like going in and out, yeah. checking in and out. Um, I think he was checking to make sure everything was good before his family moved in. Right. Um, but I just thought that was funny because I was like, I got to change that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, it's hard to believe paying that much for a house. You do the construction yourself, but some people like that. So maybe. What I think is interesting is they bought this for $1.3 million and then they did other changes. Right. Which is going to cost more on top of that. Right. Which, I mean, people people live different. Some people have, you know, like, oh, I, I've got $2 million all buy this house and add, put another 200,000 and still have 500 left over. I would like to live that life. Yeah, that'd be a nice life. Sign me up. <laughs> Someday. Right. Um, so let's talk about this letter that he received. Um, it was an all white blank envelope. It was addressed to the new owners. The letter began, dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Um, that's nice. Cool. Right. Great. Uh, but not for long. Um, (laughs) the letter started asking weird questions. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call you with its force within? Super strange. Right. And then it said, 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now. And it is approaching, and it's approaching its 110th birthday. I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s. My father watched it in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of this house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. So um, immediately questions, obviously. Um, One, I'm thinking I've never heard of a ghost writing. (laughs) So that's, that's the first thought I had was I, I I know they sometimes have people have said they do Ouija boards and stuff like that, but I've never heard of a ghost writing. If it was even handwritten, it could have been typed out, which I've definitely never heard of a ghost using it. Computer, so. I actually think it was typed out because I've tried to see what the handwriting looks like. Okay. And there has been nothing about the handwriting. So so that immediately jumps out to me that maybe, and I don't see how it would be a ghost because I, I work on computers and I've never heard of a ghost using a computer. Just up at night. Do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I saw... I mean, I've had letters pop up on my keyboard, and then I'll look down, and I'll have, like, a book sitting on it, but I've never... (laughs) Or a cat. Right, or a cat, (laughs) or or dog, yeah, something like that. Um, And then the other thing I was going to say, maybe a little early, but this is an old house, Mm -hmm. so immediately people go to 
paranormal with old houses. Mm -hmm. But if you've ever been in an old house, they're just creaky. They're they're creaky. They're drafty. They're just construction was different back then. Right. Even the foundations were different. They shift around. So I immediately think when somebody says an old house is haunted, I, I'm immediately like, I'm probably hearing noises, but it's probably just the old house. Yeah. But we'll see. Well, all we're getting in this story is the letters. I will say that. Okay. So this watcher is just writing letters. The letters get weirder. We'll say <laughs> that. But it's just strange. It's, this is, and that's why people are like, it isn't a paranormal case. It's just someone stalking this poor family. Right. Um, but it's so weird. The verbiage is weird. Um, it it's, sounds old timey. It sounds strange. Yeah. It's, it kind of feels like they're trying to scare them, like trying mm -hmm. to almost mm -hmm. like put them in a movie. Um, right. Yeah. Trying to, trying to freak them out basically. Yeah. Um, so the letter also named the car that the couple drive a white Honda minivan and talked about the workers that were working on the house. Then it said, I see already that you have flooded 657 Boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be. And then it has this. How do you, how do you do that? Tisk. Tisk, 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 I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Right, something like um, <laughs> bad move. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. It also said, you have children. I've seen them. So far, I think there are three that I have counted. Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Yeah, I, already I would not be comfortable. That that line freaks me out. Yeah, that line, like, bro, why are you so serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I immediately am just like, all right, I'm getting my kids out of here. Yeah. Um, we're... I don't know how we go back on the sale, but we're going to try to go back on the sale. Right. And this couple did, in fact, have three children, um, five, eight, and ten. So, <laughs> like I said, like, bro, sit down. Yeah. It's not that serious. You're being super creepy. It's just very ominous and very weird. Right. Um, of course, the letter wasn't signed. Um, it had no return address. So the couple wondered if it was just a prank and they kind of just kind of were like, well, that's weird, strange, and just didn't do much with it. Um, they kept the letter, which I don't know if I would have, but they did. Yeah. I mean, part of me thinks I would have just for knowing that, like, if this keeps going, I'm probably going to the police, but right. that would be the only reason I would keep it. Yep. So soon another letter came. It read, who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. This time it was signed, The Watcher. Okay, so not, it's creepy, but not quite as creepy as the first one. Right. I, opinion? it gives me the heebie-jeebies to think of someone just watching me. Yeah. Like. Just not knowing. I don't like home intruders. That's right. like my, my worst fear. But then like on top of that, having someone just watch you for no reason also right. freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. Ugh. Yeah. I think a lot of people, that's probably a lot of people's fear. Right. So this letter was received um, kind of late at night, and Derek got a little freaked out. He was home alone. Yep. Um, understandably, he was like, I'm calling the police. Um, but there wasn't much that the police could do. Um, the family had no, no known enemies, no one that would want to hurt them. But just as a good true crime fan would, he did a little digging, which would be me like, Trying to figure out who owned it. Right. Right. This is the part of the movie where they're just like, let's go to the library and let's get all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we can just Google. But. <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, it, it, if you say go to the library, it reminds me of Supernatural where they're just like, all right, we're going to dig through all our books and <laughs> look at stuff. Right. Um, the couple decided to contact the previous owners. This couple is the Woods. They had lived in the house for 23 years. 
When the transaction was made to sell the house, there were no signs. So there was no indication that they were even selling. The sell went quietly and quickly. Um, so how did the watcher even know that they're moving, really? Um, the Woods said that they had received, they hadn't received any letters until a few days before moving out. The letter was also signed the watcher, but they just threw it away. So they don't really know so, what was in it. They just kind of were like, it's weird, threw it away. So they, they did get letters, but they didn't get much. They got one. One, okay. The whole 23 years that they lived there. Which is strange. Yeah. Um, because if this family <laughs> was watching them for all those years, they would have contacted them, I guess, before. Really. Yeah, and I guess unless they were not doing anything to <clears throat> make that family mad, because they said the reason that one of the reasons was the construction. So right. they obviously that made whoever was watching kind of stirred something up, mm -hmm. apparently, according to the letters. Right. Um, the watcher knew the ages and the nicknames of all three children. They also asked whether the child who had the easel inside of the porch was the artist of the family. Uh, this is super creepy um, because you can't see that side closed porch unless you were right by it mm. or behind the house. Well, and it, it, it gets really personal when you start knowing the names and nicknames of kids. Like, that's... That's too much. Like, yeah, I'm just not, I would not be comfortable with that at all. Mm -hmm. So everyone's kind of wondering, where was he watching this little girl from? Um, in the letter, the water, the what, <laughs> the water, <laughs> the watcher asked whether or not they had found what was inside the walls. Right. Uh, that was the first letter. Too. Right. Like what's inside the walls? Like all I feel like is inside my walls is that pink shit that they... <laughs> Like Insulation, spray. yeah. <laughs> but I was hope so. What else is inside the walls, bro? Like, tell me. <laughs> well, I, at that point, you'd probably be tearing out the walls to find out. Right, I would be. Um, so the washer got creepier in his next letter. Six fifty seven Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of this house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? All... I will know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom so I can plan better. All of these windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the watcher and I have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on kindly so it was sold when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too, Broadus family. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought you, oh, brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard. And now it has brought you to me. Happy moving in day. I will be watching. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not so moving out. there. I <laughs> take the loss. If you got enough money to afford a 1.3 million dollar house and construction, just stop the construction, resell it. Whatever you got to do, I, I, none of that. I, I don't. None of it screams paranormal to me yet, mm -hmm. but what it does scream is my family's not safe. Right. That's where I'm. I'm out. Yeah. That. Um. Yeah. I mean, that just too much personal information that that person's finding out. Too much of knowing the layout of the house, because if you're just looking at a house from the outside, yeah, you can see that there's two floors, but 
are you really going to know if there's a basement? Maybe you're guessing. You're like, it's a $1.3 million house, probably has a basement. Right. It's back in 2014, maybe Zillow was a thing back then. So maybe they saw the pictures in Zillow. I don't maybe know. Maybe they toured the house. Maybe they lived there before. Yeah, maybe they tried to buy it and toured the house. I just, they know. But then that doesn't explain the kids and the kids' nicknames. Yeah. Because that's, the nicknames is weird because that's, the kids' names, you might be able to, like, find that out somewhere. You uh -huh. know, maybe they were in the paper or something. Right. But it's not how their nicknames usually. Yeah, they were watching them. They were, like, they were saying, oh, little Joey, come here. Right. And someone heard that. Um, right. And that's where it's, like, certain certain things you kind of start to be like, well, that's too personal yeah. for them to know and not have been close in some way. Yep. That's what makes the Watcher case so intriguing is because someone was someone was watching them. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Right. Who? Right. Who would want to just watch a house and watch a family and why? So like I like I mentioned too, I am in technology. Um, you know this, but our listeners don't. Um, I am in technology. That's what I do for a living. And my first thought that came through my head is okay it's 2014 technology is to the point where it's semi it's advanced but it's maybe not quite as small as what we have now but to the point where i could see them having surveillance type stuff hidden in the house mm -hmm. um, it's not so old that it's like the 90s and you'd have to have a giant camera that everybody would see but it's not probably as new as it is now where there's probably things that are so tiny we wouldn't even be able to find them right but what i'm thinking and that's my first thought is i wonder if they have cameras somewhere in the house or if they have someone mentioned that in the research yeah i wonder if because that, that's something i've heard about with airbnbs and things like that which kind of freaked me out that people like it's, it's probably like a, a debunk thing, but they're they're talking about, you know, checking your smoke detectors even to see if people put cameras in the smoke detectors or in the alarm clock or whatever. Mm. I'm sitting here thinking if they do that at Airbnbs, they could be doing that at this house that somebody is moving out of. Yeah, absolutely. They could be one of the construction workers in the house doing yep. that. <clears throat> so... Because the police couldn't do much, they suggest that everyone keep quiet about it. Because their neighbors were now suspects. Right. Uh, while that one makes neighbor, sense. right. While one neighbor was chatting with Derek about the renovations, um, he said he was happy to have some young blood in the neighborhood. <laughs> Immediately, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know everyone was like, "Is it him?" Yeah. Um, that's a weird phrase. I don't know if it's like a a phrase that people up there use. Yeah. like or if it's i don't know but it's weird to me right um it, it's weird to yeah it, it's, it's it's kind of a weird way of saying it i feel like um although you can't like say heard, he's guilty just because of that either. right but i feel like i've heard like new blood or like fresh blood or something like that and i've heard like young blood in other contexts and stuff but just in that context seems weird it does um, so that happened. And then all the contractor signs were placed in the yard. They were ripped out one morning when Derek came back. So he was like, all right, maybe that was the watcher as well. Yeah. I mean, it could be the, could have been the contractors too. Could have been the neighborhood kids at that right. point. Right. Yeah. yeah. Signs. Yeah. I feel like anybody could have done that. All right. So at this point, they decided not to bring the children into the house. Which good plan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> in agreeance. Right. Um, and they got yet another letter. It read. He likes to start. Ooh, I just labeled him as he. Ooh. That's interesting. But this person likes to start with the address. Now, um, now I'm questioning, did you let slip something you know, or is that a no, unconscious we don't know. bias? It's an unconscious bias for sure. Which, I mean... I always thought that this letter sounded male. I kind of did too, um, which means I probably had the same unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, 
it usually ends up being the male <laughs> doing this. So it's kind of hard to argue with that bias. It's not good, but mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to to dispute you thinking that way immediately. Right. So here's the next letter. 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It is coming after me. I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend and now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me. I will fend off its bad things and wait for it to become good again. It will not punish me. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young bl blood play again like it once did. Let the young blood sleep in 657 Boulevard. Stop changing it and let it alone. This, it feels like I, I was trying to, I kind of probably looked like I was spacing out there, but I was trying to think of what it sounds like. It sounds like um, who wrote, uh, I think it was like Telltale Heart. Um, oh, Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah, it sounds like somebody's trying to write yeah. like an Edgar Allan Poe thing through letters. Like, a, right. I don't even want to say a poem because it's not a poem, but a story maybe through po through letters. Right. Because it just, it has that feeling because the Telltale Heart was the, and you know, spoiler alert if you haven't read a book from like <laughs> 70 years ago. Um, <laughs> um, the, the floor, the, the heart and the floor kind uh -huh. of thing. And so it almost feels like they're trying to do like a house is alive kind of thing like that. Yeah. Almost like a parody, not really a parody of that, but something similar to it. So then it, it raises the question, are they really doing any harm to anybody? Uh, yes. I, I think, think threatening. Right. Yes. I, I think scary. If you want to watch stuff, just post it online. There's Reddit <laughs> now. Like everyone right. will be like, whoa, cool story, bro. Yeah. So if they were sitting there saying, ooh, there's ghosts in the house. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. But saying like, I know your kids' names. Mm -hmm. I know what rooms they're going to have or, you know, I know what rooms they might have. It does. It does cross that line to me that yeah. it starts to become more of a threat and less of a story. If it was, if it was, and then also the the spying aspect, like everybody's entitled to their privacy. Right. So, for people to be spied on to the point where you know what's in their house and where it is, like that's that's illegal too. That's not okay. Yep. Uh, I think at this point, <laughs> the watcher is absolutely losing their shit. It sounds like it. Like bad. I think that at this point... I don't get why the Watcher was saying the house was turning against them. Like in what yeah. way? Just the fact that the kids didn't come? Like, I, th Yeah, I think he was saying, like, I scared you off. But, like, he was planning on... <laughs> I, I don't get it. It feels like he was planning on scaring them off. And then when they did get scared off, he was like, oh, now I have nothing to do. It feels like the, the story that they were trying to make... Mm -hmm. was kind of disrupted, I guess. Right. And so they're, they're, I think they were trying to be looking at it from like how an author would work kind of perspective. I was mm -hmm. thinking they're like, oh, well, this house is haunted and I'm somebody who's haunting the house, but then now you're doing construction, so you're messing up my haunting. Right. Is almost kind of how I feel like they're trying to make it play out. Mm -hmm. um and they're like we're gonna haunt your kids and they're like wait you didn't bring your kids you just messed up my next three chapters <laughs> like, right i i don't know maybe that's not how it is but it feels like an author who had their story messed up mm -hmm. so at this point the family set up cameras hired a private investigator but nothing really came of it um, there was a family that lived behind the house and they seemed pretty suspicious at first. Suspicious of what? That they were the ones doing it. Oh, they were suspicious the family behind was doing it. Right. Okay. They think I thought you were saying the family behind was suspicious 
of something going on in this house. Right. Like, there's the, like they saw somebody or they saw weird things happening or something. So behind the Broadduses, which was the Watcher house, mm-hmm. um, was a mother well into her 90s and then her son who was about 60. The 60-year-old son allegedly had schizophrenia. Um, and there was nothing concrete to say that he was doing it. Um, but they interviewed them both. They both said they had no involvement. Um, people really point to him because when you have schizophrenia, you're a little bit different than other people. That's, and that's an interesting topic. And I'm glad you said that because I've always thought this was an interesting thing that I've heard people say before, but People have, I've always heard it that um, a lot of times people are who are not mentally okay are also the ones that cause issues. Mm. But then also I hear people say who are, have mental illnesses of some form. And you know, you and I both know that we've had our, Mm -hmm. you know, we've had our, our battles here and there with different things, but uh, so maybe that's why I kind of relate with it more and understand it more, but they're like, well, no, and not all people who have mental illness are bad people. Like right. just because sometimes it happens a lot where schizophrenic people might do something. It doesn't mean all schizophrenic people do bad things is exactly. what I'm trying to get at. Mm-hmm. And so I I hope that people are making that connection and saying, okay, but he seems like he did something. And they're not saying, well, because he's schizophrenic, I think he did it. Right. Because being schizophrenic doesn't make you do that stuff. Yeah. Like you can be schizophrenic and have, be taking your medications, be seeing a psychiatrist and mm-hmm. be a functioning you know, adult in society. Right. Um, So I I wouldn't assume that he did it because of that, but if there are other pieces in play there that, you know, I mean, just the location could make him seem uh, suspicious. Right. And let me play devil's advocate for just a second. All of what you said was true. Um, I think people point to him because the letters are very scattered they're saying i identify as this house i identify as a person that's watching the house it's all over the place so i think if you analyze the letters it does seem someone who is not well but that doesn't necessarily mean someone who has schizophrenia it doesn't mean someone who right it could just be someone who's not doing good and that's that's where i I'm like, I'm not a, a psychologist, so right. I, I can't go too far into that. But I'm sitting there thinking what I know of schizophrenia is you can, there are multiple different forms. And I know a, a couple forms is you hear, you can hear auditory hallucinations, which is the more common mm-hmm. where you kind of hear somebody talking to you or you hear a voice basically, or you, you think people are saying things that they aren't. Uh And then you have visual hallucinations. And so where that disconnect I have is, I guess you could make the conclusion that that person hearing things could make them associate it as they're part of the house because that's what they're hearing, maybe. Uh But it's weird. I don't think schizophrenia that I know of, at least. Maybe, like I said, I'm not a, a... psychologist by any means but i don't know if i've ever heard of a case of it making someone put themselves into another object or into a right you know into a scenario like that but i I guess i could see it warping their their sense of what's real and what's not and maybe they're hearing that they were seeing that they were part of something that maybe they weren't so yeah i Mm -hmm. there's both sides i see where you're coming from yeah Yeah, there's definitely both sides. Also, like, the mother's in her 90s. He's in his 60s. That time frame would kind of match up that the family's been been watching. Because the the house was, 
It was 2014, and the mm-hmm. house was built in, like, they said it was coming up on, like, its 110th birthday. Right. So, the assuming that they had been there the whole time, the mother would have been there since, you know, the house was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, assuming they've been there the whole time, that is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it does kind of match up if they've been there a long time like that. Right. Um, I guess just my my point, and we've been reading a lot about and hearing a lot about ethical true crime, is to everybody out there, just don't assume because somebody has a, a mental illness that it was them. Yes, and we, we <laughs> try, do this. Try to, at least if you're looking into that kind of stuff, try to find concrete reasons why you think that's the case and not assume, you know, try to find... Um, I don't know if you actual yeah like if you had seen that he had lived in that house before or if Mm -hmm. neighbors had said he had been going in that house a lot when it was vacant or something like then by all means that feels like evidence but don't make your sole reason because of a mental illness because we don't want to we don't want to hurt people like that that may have absolutely nothing to do with it (laughs) yeah I I feel like in true crime we tend to go on a witch hunt right um Sometimes cops allude to it. They'll say, you know, when you're looking for a sub uh, suspect, they'll say, you know, it's the guy next door that's kind of weird, and then everybody's turning Which they, in. They shouldn't be doing that, right? But Everyone's yeah, turning happen. in this guy that's just different, just eccentric, right. and um, we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, um, I will say in this case, these poor people have been scrutinized mm-hmm. since the beginning because. He's schizophrenic and because of the proximity. Right. That is not right. Like, stop, stop. Yeah. All of that. It's one thing when you start to hear <clears throat> stuff that you're like, oh man, that sounds like, you know, they're like, oh, we got DNA evidence and this kind of matches. They mm-hmm. match it up. But then it's like, all right, you can suspect that person. And I know I did it earlier too. I'm like, well, if it's that guy. <laughs> um, but that was kind of you know flippant like backhanded um Mm -hmm. joking but at the same point in time it was kind of like oh well you know the guy just said a um, phrase a phrase that was in the letter so there was some some actual what felt like at least close to evidence or at least circumstantial evidence maybe i don't know but right something that makes you think maybe yeah uh not just basing it off of mental illness yep at the end of the day we don't know who the watcher is we just don't right and we can speculate all day every day but until the cops tell us they have something factual or until someone says i am the watcher right we don't know well and i gotta ask you have they tried asking them to send them a floppy disk (laughs) (laughs) because that worked great for the witch doll please (laughs) um so maybe i mean can't figure out where that came from he's like i'll send you a floppy disk of all the letters yeah can you go ahead and put some word docs on there and just send them over on a floppy disk right oh man um right right if you haven't watched that one go back and watch it you'll get the reference yeah go back and watch btk for sure um it's just a good episode right I'm not going to toot my own horn, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was that suspect that really wasn't a suspect. And then there was also um, some neighbors that just conveniently like put their lawn chairs facing straight at the neighbor's house, like straight at their fence. It's always super weird. It is super, super I mean, weird. It's, it's normal. Like it's your property. You can face lawn chairs wherever you want but then it mm-hmm. just makes you being outside like we don't uh, it's so funny because we don't have a choice like our yeah our the Ours way that face each other anyways. yeah our backyards are just up against each other right. it doesn't seem like it is that case and for they're, this they're up on a, a hill for us and so yeah. they're up higher and they can kind of see over our fence it's like the episode of um Oh man, um, Big Bang Theory, where they uh, Howard and Bernadette's light house the oh. person puts the lights over their backyard. Right. Yeah, it, that's kind of what it feels like because they're just looking down on us in our backyard, and we're just like, "Hey, I'm just trying to take the dog out to the bathroom." I don't, I don't really want somebody to watch me do that. Right. 
Um, but they just had posted up looking at the house and people are like, oh, that's a sign. And it's like, that might not be yeah, at it, all. It's, it's so, weird, but it's not. That's like you were talking about when you're in true crime and you're grasping for anything that you can that could be a lead. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and that's why I think people should be careful because when you think about it, like it could be you situation, it could like that's almost as vague as being like the killer had Starbucks that day <laughs> and you're sitting there going, Oh, oh, this guy likes Starbucks. Yep. They could be you. You could be there and somebody be like, Hey, this person likes Starbucks. They could be the killer. I do yeah. like the pink drinks. Right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, be careful jumping to things on minor. You Poor know. Brandon Ferris. He would be right. Brandon <laughs> Ferris would be in trouble. <laughs> I think he's on to other stuff now, though. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what the other stuff he's into, but yeah. Um, so things started to get tough for the family, of course. Uh, they poured all of this money into this house that they now did not live in. Yeah. So what do they do now? After only six months of owning 657 Boulevard, they tried to put it back on the market. Which, it failed. <laughs> right, which I, what I was going to say is... We knew this from, you know, having looked at real estate and stuff like that. But a lot of people, when they see something was bought and then turned around and resold really quickly after, one of your thoughts are, what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. Like, what happened in those six months to make you want to sell it? Unless it looked like you were flipping it. Right. Like, unless you're like, oh, I'll do all this construction to it, which they were doing construction. So maybe... Maybe they were trying to make it look like that, like we made so many improvements and improved the value of the house. But usually if you turn around and resell a house real quick after, people are going to say, what's well, wrong? Right. Um, and they tried many, many times. It failed many, many times. Um, no one wanted this house. Um, they were like, we don't want a house that's being watched. Uh, so... The couple decided to rent out a property in 2017 and see if that would help, like rent the property. Oh. Right. Um, and then, however, only two weeks after that, another letter came. Mm. Now, what I did want to talk about was the ethical dilemma of should the Woods, the previous owner, tell the Broadduses that they had gotten this letter? Well, they sued them. And tried to say that they were responsible because they did not tell them that they got that one letter. Well, I was going to say, <clears throat> I, where I thought you were going with this is the eth ethical dilemma of the Broadus family is now renting it to somebody else who's mm -hmm. getting this. So they're... <laughs> There's a lot of ethical dilemmas, how, yeah, how are they? How are they suing the first family, but then renting it out to another family and doing this? And maybe they told the other they family. They must have told the other family. May, you know, maybe, we don't know that, so maybe they told the other family. Maybe they probably rented how. it for like $5 a month. But I, I think <laughs> that other family had to be crazy or, or really want a good deal. Because, yeah. you know, if they're like, or they left out some of the facts. Because if they're like, yeah, no, somebody's watching the house and they know all our kids' names, I'd be like, I'll pass. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it. No matter a, how good it is. I don't need to save money that bad. I love the sun soaked, but no thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another letter came only after two weeks of the renters living there. It says, you wonder who the watcher is. Turn around, idiots. <laughs> Maybe you even spoke to me. One of the so-called neighbors who has no idea who the watcher could be. Or maybe, do you know, they're too scared to tell anyone. Good move. I walked by the new trucks when they took over the neighborhood and mocked me. I watched you, uh, or I watched as you watched the dark house in attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher. The Watcher also alluded to revenge in some form. Um, maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day. 
Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. So that one's threatening. So, so many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, first of all, that's like a fortune teller telling you that you someday will have something good happen to you. <laughs> It's so, they listed so many things. Yeah. It's like, you might trip someday. One day you might die. (laughs) Well, I trip fairly often. You're probably right. (laughs) Um, So that's that's pretty vague, but it does feel threatening. It does feel like that kind of crosses the line. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing I caught in there, and maybe I was only thinking about it because of what we were talking about, but it, when it said, turn around, you idiots, Mm -hmm. that is actually one of those pieces where I'm kind of like maybe that does point to somebody behind them because you turn around when somebody's behind you right so maybe that that but even that's still circumstantial like don't jump to throw in the book at him but then that's like another piece that might make you like well maybe or maybe it's someone who like have heard around town that yeah. they're going after this guy and they're like ha I'm just going to make it look like. Right. Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, that makes sense, too. Because that's why usually, I think, um, police don't reveal their suspects normally. Right. Because they don't want things throwing them off their trail or mm-hmm. the suspect trying to throw them off their trail. Yep. Um, so this was the last letter. No one has heard from the watcher since 2017. There was another house who got similar letters as well, but nothing was threatening. As technology got better, one letter was tested for DNA, and it was not matched to any of the neighbors or suspects that we thought. It was also determined that the DNA was female. Huh. That is not at all what I thought. Um, right. But Me either. it could just be the DNA on the envelope is female. I mean, yeah, that could which... be an envelope. That's the person a, who's doing the mail. Right. That would be a weird thing to know if they tested the outside and that's where they got the DNA or if they tested the letter inside the envelope because I wouldn't think the mail person would have been able to get DNA inside the envelope, I would right. assume. I mean, maybe it could... Your hands are sweaty. It's kind of gross, but maybe your hands are sweaty and soaks through the envelope. <laughs> like, maybe, but... um. So, we have... The suspects. We have the broadest family themselves. Did they do this for fame? Recognition or whatever. But that's a big cost. I think no, yeah, because of the cost that it would be for them not being able to sell the house. Are they still the owners? Or I don't know that. Mm, okay. Um I do know that it's it's uh well it said at the beginning, what did I say that it was It's not, I mean, there's nobody living there. It's vacant. I do know that. Um, I mean, that'd be weird to just buy that house, do it to yourself, and just let it sit vacant like you just lost a million dollars. Right. I mean, they did get fame because now there's going to be all of this. Netflix show. And and me talking about it. which Right. uh, (laughs) And Morbid. And And Morbid talking about it. I mean, it's been on a lot of different podcasts. but Right. Um. So we have them, but we don't think, I don't think that they're it. Uh, the neighbors, um, was the DNA just someone handling it? Which um, uh, originally I was thinking neighbor because of just how easy I think it would be to do that as a neighbor. Mm-hmm. I mean, how nosy. You're literally you, watching. Yeah, you're, you're literally, I mean, how many times have you looked over at your neighbor's house to just kind of be like, oh, you're cooking out on the grill? Like, yeah. I don't care that you're cooking out on the grill, but Throw me a hot dog, good. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, something smelled good, so I looked over. You know, it. I mean, it's so easy to watch your neighbors, even if you don't mean to. Uh-huh. Um, and they obviously purposely mean to, which makes it even easier. <laughs> they they obviously are close because they knew things that you can't just know. That's that's kind of one of my things about it. It has to be someone somewhat close at least in the town it's not someone from you said they're in like boston i think new hampshire new hampshire um it's not somebody from florida that's probably doing this because 
how are you going to find out some of those specific details? Like it's not some just random person on the internet sending letters Uh because they had to know certain things happening at that house. And what it it had to be somebody in the area. Right. What it seems to me is they just dropped the letter off because there was no postage. There was no return address. Okay. Yeah. So that takes out the, the post office or the um, postal worker theory. True. True. Yeah. If there's, if it didn't go through the postal system, which that there is a crime too. So yeah, (laughs) you're not supposed to, it's illegal, but I don't know if it's, um, I don't know how big of a crime it is. I assume it's pretty big crime, but I think that's a federal crime. To mess with the mail. I bet this would probably be stalking in some form. Yeah. I feel like it'd have to be stalking. I feel like it'd have to be threatening, possibly whatever the name of the crime is, messing with the mail. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have that. Uh, the gamer. So there was this boy, a uh, younger kid. I don't think he was like a boy, but he was a younger, like 19, 19 year old or something. Um, he loved playing a game called The Watcher where you watch people suspicious right and uh he i guess was caught outside in a van of the other house that got a letter also suspicious um he did not match the dna evidence there was no reason he was involved or evidence so they let him go but it was something that people point to yeah, he could have had um an accomplice mm-hmm. um so the watcher in my opinion i've always thought that it seems male um i don't know why the tone the weirdness of it just i guess i think males are weird i don't know <laughs> thanks um, <laughs> appreciate it it seems older to me um or trying to write older um or, or trying to write old timey um it seems like they are connected to the house or wants to be connected to the house in some way um I don't think it's a ghost. I think you can't really like write letters from beyond. Yeah. Type them out on your uh, computer. Right. Yeah. Um, what, what are your opinions now that we're kind of at the end here? Yeah. I mean, I definitely interjected most of the way through this. So <laughs> I probably already put out too many opinions, but um, I think the person <laughs> writing it had kind of a, storyteller sense about them that's kind of what i got that's, so you don't think they were going to do anything harmful i don't know i don't know if i would go that far because that there are people that get too invested in their stories that that you know you think of like actors that are the kind of actors that just have to get into the role and then they get too far into the role mm-hmm. they kind of lose themselves in it so i don't know if they were going to do harm or not but I do think the intention was to basically make a living horror show or mm. a living suspense show, maybe yeah. not horror, but um, to make something that you would find in a book, but do it in real life mm-hmm. is kind of the sense I get of it. And there's, you know, there's also a lot of people have that sense of like wanting to send, like have a feeling of control. Mm-hmm. And that's usually like leads to like serial killers and stuff, doesn't it? Like, isn't that yeah, a thing? Yeah, it can. And like, so maybe they hadn't gotten violent yet, but maybe this was like a step in that direction. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely would not rule out there being potential. I do think, like you said, it's not paranormal to me. Like, right. I don't see any way that it would be paranormal. Um. I would be more likely to think spying like video cameras or anything like that. Even somebody sneaking into the house, which is creepy, but yeah, it's creepy. It could be, uh, it could be happening that way. People could be, I mean, parts of the time there's no one in the house. So somebody could be sneaking into the empty house and looking around. Mm-hmm. Um, so the gamer one was interesting because yes, the DNA was female, but if you, you know, like if, he had somebody working with him, like uh, just doing it with him, like, oh, this is funny. Mm-hmm. And not doing it just by himself. Maybe, you know, maybe the DNA was female and maybe that was his accomplice and we just don't know who his accomplice was. Right. Um, but I, I definitely, all I really know out of all this is it's probably somebody fairly close, probably somebody from the area. And. Whoever it is should just come forward so we know the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of those cases where it just keeps you on your toes. Yeah. 
Um, so that is the case of The Watcher. Go watch it on Netflix. Be the watcher watching The Watcher on Netflix. <laughs> And it'll be interesting to see, and let us know this too, if watching it on Netflix changes your opinion mm-hmm. from what you hear, what, uh, our theories, maybe you watch it on Netflix and you go, oh, well, there's a key piece of information on the Netflix series or was it a series or a movie? Um, series. And I don't know if it's going to be a documentary style or if it's going to be a be TV one of those, style. like, dramatic reenactments. Right. Uh, the trailer. <laughs> so sometimes I hate those. <laughs> the trailers? No, I just, I said the dramatic reenactments. Oh, because sometimes right. it's like they really try to spice it up and mm-hmm. try to make it, like, really dramatic. Like, there's some creepy guy just standing outside the house <laughs> typing on their computer. So, like, <laughs> that never happened. Right. Um, the trailer is really funny because it's got, and I wish I would have wrote her name down, but, um, so in, I don't know if you've seen this movie, uh, the Cinderella with, um, Hilary Duff. No, uh, but she, <laughs> there's this scene, you know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> she's got, else. she's got the tanning goggles on and she, <laughs> she goes, you're not very pretty and you're not very bright. Um, I'll play this. I'll, I'll play it for you. Okay, You'll know who it is. Right. Um, but anyway, she is the real estate agent and she's just basically trying to sell you this house. Gotcha. Um, that is the only thing in the trailer. It doesn't say what it's going to be, what it's going to be like, but I'm super excited for it, um, to find out what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope it's more, I'm fine with documentaries where they, um, kind of play something happening mm-hmm. like the this is what it could have looked like i don't necessarily like the ones where they just add their own like well what if we make it look like this is what happened right you know yeah. um so if as long as it's as long as it's truthful like i'm i'm good with it um mm-hmm. so i hopefully that's the way they go if it's not it'll still be entertaining i just may not uh <laughs> may not change how i feel about the case so what I will tell you is what's coming up for me slash us is I went down a big rabbit hole with this case and I decided to research handwriting analysis. Like I said, you can't really do that with a watcher because they it's either it's typed or they didn't post it. Um, but I researched handwriting analysis. It was the most interesting thing I've ever <laughs> listen to um and we are gonna do some handwriting analysis i don't know if i'm gonna do it or drew's gonna do it with me but we will probably put that on patreon um you can find that at patreon.com slash code 187 i will post the link below for that um you're definitely gonna want to watch that because that's gonna be super interesting yeah and think about it i was mentioning the things like the starbucks well I mean, you, how paranoid are you that your writing is like some, you know, like some crazy killer. person's writing and you're like, I just write the way I write. I I'm, I'm promise I'm not. I just, I don't know why I write like this. Right. There's a certain thing, um, as a little teaser for you, there's a certain thing that when you have it, most of those people are criminals. See, so. you, <laughs> you need to tune in and find out if you're either a criminal or going to be a criminal in your life at some point. Right. Um, so Patreon slash code 187. Um, we'll, we'll see you guys there and we'll see you next time with another true crime case. So see you later. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Hi guys. I just wanted to say, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button help us out, help us grow. Um, You can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, Yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, Tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. and of course YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.